the director of analytics for the uh, Atlanta Blaze professional lacrosse team. So, Jesse, I'm going to put the mic on mute, and it's all yours. Thanks, Wayne. Sounds great. How's everybody doing today? They're all doing well. I had Mike the mute already. The, the mic already. You're all set. Perfect. Sounds great. Well, first I'd like to thank Wayne. I'd like to thank Eric and Diane and Scott for allowing me the opportunity to present uh, a pretty brief presentation on acquisition analysis and visually across today. Um, I think what the UWSP is doing with this conference, among other uh, colleges uh, throughout the country, is fantastic. It's certainly putting uh, a good face on the sports analytics and it's allowing students as well as uh, amateurs and even professionals uh, to really kind of spread the word and talk a little about what exactly is going on with their sport. So today, I'd like to talk a little bit about where did this all start? Uh, you can buy the analytics in uh, particularly Atlanta, and why did it all start? Uh, talk a little bit about opposition analysis. Uh, for those of you who have been to other conferences, uh, most notably the MIT Sloan Analytics Conference in Boston in the early spring, um, I'm going to open up Pandora's box today. Uh, when you go to those particular conferences, you tend to notice that there's sessions that talk about specific materials, specific pieces, but they don't really get into the nitty gritty of what their team is doing. Um, I don't have a non-disclosure agreement, so I'm going to show you everything that we do. I actually went back and uh, readjusted our presentation uh, that I'm presenting on today uh, to highlight some of the ops analysis that we did actually for our game that just finished a little bit over 90 minutes ago. Uh, we had a Thursday matinee game against the New York Lizards. Uh, fortunately, we were able to come away with the 16-14 win. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of version 1.0 where we're at presently, along with some moving forward version 2.0, and hopefully we can finish off with some QA. A little bit about myself. I'm an engineer by trade. I uh, graduated from the University of Delaware for the last 11 years. I've been a member of the mathematics department at William Penn High School in Castle Delaware. Uh, my foray into sports analytics started back in 2010. I uh, got an opportunity to move on and become an associate coach and ultimately uh, an assistant with the University of Delaware Men's ACHA Division One ice hockey team. Uh, from there, some of the networks and connections that I was able to build, had an opportunity to move on into some teams within the group at Major Juniors, so I worked with both Bay and Moore as well as GQT. Um, and then I actually did some quick pre-scout analysis work with uh, the Swiss national team for the 15 World Junior Championships. And I've been in this role now for about 19 months. Um, Atlanta Blazer representing their second season uh, coming in Major League Lacrosse out of the expansion era. So we've pretty much been there since the uh, initial inception. So why did we decide to kind of bring Lax Analytics into a professional organization within NFL? Mainly the whole idea was because the data that the league work provides is largely unreliable. Um, it's very limited in scope, very little impact on game outcome. Um, as you notice here, this is actually last year's game sheet that you see on the right, or excuse me, on the left hand side uh, for the 1918 Denver win over Ohio in the MLL championship last August. Um, these are just the traditional game sheets that come out, and from a perspective of Vanna at that time, um, the biggest issue that we're noticing too is that they're largely inaccurate. For example, um, I highlight here in week one of our season. Uh, in 2016, we only had four games and there were only four total turnovers on the game sheets and all four came from our game uh, against Chesapeake and I've also noticed that there were about four turnovers in a 75-90 second span of that game. So for, for better or for worse, we're, we're dealing with some inaccuracies and the biggest thing that we needed to provide the Blaze coaching staff, our general management group, as well as our owner, uh, Mr. Tremontera, we need to provide accurate data that we can hopefully bring some type of objective analysis to. So some of the ops analysis that we're providing, uh, obviously most ops analysis uses data to um, provide some type of subjectivity. Um, we want to look at many different situations over a season. Uh, the Pandora's box that I'm actually opening is this week's uh, report that we just did uh, for the game that actually just finished. We're going to look at both offensive as well as defensive, as well as goaltending tendencies, um, type of efficiencies, not only from a team perspective, but also from a player, individual perspective, um, and how they're doing performance-wise. We'll look at pre-scout uh, 
this traditionally is going to get sent three to five days in advance. Um, I sent our staff this report uh, just uh, Sunday afternoon, actually. So they got it about four and a half days in advance. Um, and then from there, it goes to our staff, to our front office, and then our general manager and head coach, um, Spencer Ford and David Hunter, respectively, will present that data out to our team um, players. So what are we looking for when we look at lacrosse Ops analysis. We're looking at style. Um, what is that? What the offense and defense do? Where are their strengths? Who are creating their strengths? Who are their weaknesses? And where are those weaknesses uh, taking place on field? And hopefully, we have an opportunity to capitalize on it. Uh, who are their primary game changers? You're going to notice uh, in our offensive report, we're going to highlight pretty much the top six forwards um, each week that we'll represent. And we'll obviously highlight those six uh, top players from New York today. And then looking forward we try to utilize some video to present opportunities for disruption um, where can we uh, generate the greatest opportunities to to move the ball create turnovers get transition um, increase uh, increase possession play so all ops analysis contents uh, we're going to include just top four we're going to talk some about the league information um, and we'll also talk about and highlight some of the great work that's being done in the public sphere specific to this uh, we'll show a little bit about what we do from the offense, from goaltending, from defense, and then video analysis and staff suggestions. Unfortunately, just due to the size of the folder and, and files that Blackboard Collaborate was unable to do today, um, we can highlight that for another time. Also, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or by e by email. I'm more than happy to uh, extend these conversations beyond just this presentation. So, a little bit about this. We're going to look at both the offensive as well as defensive efficiencies for each team. Um, the work that I'm going to be highlighting here in the next couple of slides is done by a gentleman by the name of Joe Egan. Uh, he's a writer for U.S. Lacrosse Mag. He's an insider for MajorLeagueLacrosse.com. Um, he also started a website just a couple of months ago called MoneyBallLacrosse.com. I suggest all of you who have an interest in analytics and the game of lacrosse, specifically the MLL, uh, please make sure that you check out Joe on Twitter and please make sure you check out Joe's website. Um, he's really doing some fantastic stuff. I will say though, uh, in, in our ops analysis and the data that we're collecting in house, a lot of these are being taken into consideration as well. Um, for example, unassisted versus assisted shots. Um, are we looking at catch and shoot versus dodge and shoot scenarios? You're looking at a two man fast break coming from X behind the net. Uh, are you starting initiation at the top of the key? Uh, similar to basketball, are you starting from wing play? Um, are you coming off a dodge? Are you going to be catching and shooting, looking at a pass and assist opportunity. These are all types of scenarios that you would be looking at, both from a league as well as from an individual player perspective. We'll do the same thing on the defensive side of the ball as well. And again, by the same scenarios. We'll also look at clear and ride. Um, how many opportunities do we have the ability to entry and exit? as just on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Along with team rebounding percentages. So many of the shot creation data that we're basically collecting in-house, we're looking at what is the result. And some of those results could be just simply clean saves where we're, where we are <coughs> not optional. And we're looking at messy saves. And off of those messy saves, are you looking at a 50-50 ground ball opportunity and who's Picking up that 50 50 ball, is it coming from the offensive rebound? Or from the offensive? <coughs> so, just some bit to take into consideration. We're not necessarily using this as the end all be all. I like to say with our team and with our staff that analytics and the idea of predictable analysis in the game is a nice piece to the puzzle. Um, our coaching staff kind of embraces the idea that idea is a bad idea, and any information that we have can hopefully be some type of advantage that we can bring to our on-field performance. So from now, we can also take a look at individual player. So obviously highlighting probably the top uh, 10 players here. You're obviously noticing guys, if you're familiar with the game of cross, guys like Paul Rabel, Joe Walters, Matt Gibson, Bob Pinnell. These have been kind of household names in the game for almost a dozen years. Um, some viewers, uh, I think Pinnell's been in the league four or five years, but these are guys who, if you're following MLL, are household names, creating opportunities, high point, high volume shooters. 
Um, and we obviously want to take a look at not only where they do in from their offensive capability, but hopefully what you'll have a chance to see here is how we're going to try to take this and extend upon to see if there's a little bit more signal uh, beyond just the data that you see right here. So we'll look at catch and shoot scenarios as well as dodge and shoot scenarios who are primary assist and uh, secondary assist shooters. Um, assist to turnover ratio is also extremely important when looking at who can be potentially capitalized on um, coming in zone, looking at potential disruptions. Uh, something's very relevant to basketball where they have the three point line. We actually have a line in our gate at 16 yards beyond that front. Um, I'll give you a nice quick visual so that you'll have a chance to see what that looks like. So, I want to many slides here. So we'll look at shooting attempts. Who are your high volume shooters for the team? So just a simple descending histogram. Um, players on the left are probably the ones we're going to take the most consideration into, along with primary assists. And then looking at specific shots. So one of the things that we've been working on over the last 19 months is collecting data to highlight out uh, some type of X, Y visualization of shooting tendencies for players. Um, so very similar to uh, Kirk Oldsbury, uh, formerly of Grantland.com, of FY Research, and is currently the Chief Strategic Officer for the San Antonio Spurs. We're going to try to provide some type of visualization um, for our team and for our staff and for our players. The players tend to respond very well to pictures and, and visual representation of, of player tendencies and results. Um, so we started to do that uh, just a, about 19 months ago, me along with my assistant, my high school student, Tyler Shanza uh showcase here in just a little bit. We've currently tracked just under 14,000 shots, 13,638 as of uh, Monday morning. Um, this is data that's going through the 2015, 2016, and up to week 11 at present. Um, we're looking at uh, anywhere from 40 different variables for every shot attempt. And one of the first things that came into consideration is zone. So you see a 22 zone system here. Uh, zones one to five represent zero to two yards beyond the net front. That triangle in the bottom center represents the goal. Zone six to 10 represents yards three to 10. 11 to 17 represents yards 11 to 16. And then obviously that solid black line uh, extending just before zones 18 to 22 is our two point line. And then 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 represent 16 greater than 16 for our two point shot attempts. So, what exactly does New York do? Well, it looks something like this. So, this represents a density map uh, on the left representing all of their shots with specified coordinates. So, each of the 22 zones, along with the secondary variable, excuse me, tertiary variable representing distance from net front. So it kind of looks like fingers on a hand. Um, we're obviously not in a situation where we have the technology to be able to run specific XY. We do not have player tracking in our game. So manual tracking is the best that we've got. But we, our coaching staff has been really receptive to this along with our players because they think that it does a really good job of just giving us some data and kind of getting to understand where exactly um, our opposition is shooting from. From the density perspective, and then on the right, you see our efficiencies. So uh, this is kind of chromatic blue to red, below average to above average, as you see in that picture. We'll also look at uh, offensive shot selection and then the result of those. So goals created and messy saves are represented on the left. Um, shots by the opposition are represented off net or clean saves for some of those further distance out. We will also take this opportunity to break this down into probably our top six forwards. So we've done this, this uh, for Paul Rabel, and the next five players I believe we've highlighted, Will Manny, who was recently acquired in a trade from Boston, Rob Pinnell, Matt Gibson, Tommy Palasek, um, and Joe Walters. So on the left is obviously the density model, on the right represents efficiency, and then the circles represent an action rate. So some of the work that I'll highlight later on in these slides, showcases some of the work that we've done with uh, probability clouding and graph theory work. So looking at action rates and seeing where on field specifically those action rates are occurring beyond 
you know, 20 to 50 percent or excessive 70 percent. Um, this gives us some nice conversation pieces with our defensive side of the ball, trying to determine how are we going to line up, are we going to go man, are we going to go zone, um, are we going to kind of bring a few guys out, help the team, look for a slide. Um, for a Dodger, you know, in advance of when we would initially do that in the first place. So these are all just some really nice pieces that bring together some very interesting conversations. So Rabel is here. We also highlight Joe Walters. Rob Pinnell. Will Manny, who was only acquired about two and a half weeks ago from the Boston Cannons, so and most of his data represents his time in Boston. Matt Gibson and Tommy Palasek. We'll also look at goaltending. So we'll take uh, some of the data that we've been collecting, uh, not only from shot attempt, we'll also look and take into consideration the goaltender. Uh, so we've got 393 shot attempts through uh, this point in the season for Drew Adams. We'll go have a breakdown of 22 point goals to 367 shot attempts, 26 shot attempts for the two point. Uh, some goalie analytics uh, done by Joe Keegan at Moneyball. So unassisted save percentage versus assisted save percentage, clean save percentage, and then the offensive efficiency after saves. Um, we'll also take in just some of the granular games played with losses, goals against, and save percentages. Here's Drew Adams' density and efficiencies map. So something that we would really want to capitalize on here, and we had a really good opportunity to do that with our attack play today with Randy Stotts, Martin Matthews, who came out with a six-point game, and Kevin Rice, also a four-point game, it is really attacking from X and generating uh, two main game opportunities that really open up time and space for us to get shots in that first two yards here coming off of an extended goal line, both on the left and right. So where you see it's highlighted in red here, we were really very successful in being able to capitalize on our game plan. We'll also break down his goals created versus clean saves. So Drew is not the type of goaltender who's going to give up a lot of outside shots. Um, I don't believe that we even attempted a two-point shot attempt today. Um, I would probably have advised against that. That tends to be one of his kind of bread and butter save opportunities. We would also look at the defensive side of the ball. Here's their density map. And then where they generate the greatest amount of goals in messy saves. You'll probably notice that this looks very similar to Drew Adams because Drew has actually been the goaltender for every one of uh, the 11 games uh, up through this season thus far for the New York Lizards, so they really don't have any. Um, back of goaltender that's really taken out any other shots that would make a different density map than what you see. Some of the limitations I did mention, we don't have motion uh, tracking, we don't have computer vision capability presently, we don't have a sport view system, um, we don't have an outside contract. Um, some of our access is limited with some of those statistics, largely some of those we level statistics were wrong. Um, I would like to give a hat tip to some of the really great people who have really started to build on the grassroots statistics and the game of Major League Lacrosse and Field Cross specifically. Highlight Joe Keegan, uh, James Payette, formerly of Crossover, uh, Dr. Larry Feldman, who runs a wonderful website called MaxBlades.com, uh, Kyle and Zach, I hope you're presently in the room. I know that you're at the conference today. You run an awesome website called MaxReference.com. Um, I would suggest that everybody uh, take an opportunity to uh, either follow these gentlemen on Twitter, we'll take a look at what are some of the great contributions that they're uh, making uh, on their websites and in the public sphere. Some of our version 2.0 work that we're going on, um, we've been doing some great work with passing networks and graph theory. We've kind of extended some of this work that we started last year. Uh, Taylor Fairview was an undergraduate intern who was working with us at the time at Roanoke College, he's present in grad school. Um, started to look at some of the passing networks and, and where those uh, action rates were occurring that's kind of highlighted in some of the ops analysis report that you saw specific to some of those players. These passing and results work would then turn into these types of action rates. So this is just one of the examples that we had for probability clouding uh, for one of our opposition pieces last year for Charlotte. 
I mentioned Taylor. Uh, we've actually been very fortunate to work with uh, a variety of public sector, private sector, and academia uh, members, some of who have been even presenting today. Um, and I would like to give them the hat tip along with them, some of their student contributors. Uh, Mr. Christopher Long, formerly of Valpala, worked with Houston Rockets, as well as the San Diego Projects for eight years. He's been a wonderful contributor to uh, some of the work that we've done. Walter Grange and Harrison Schramm from Canaan Advisors. I know that Dr. Bosch uh, of Dexalytics presented today from the University of Minnesota. I'm sure that that presentation was fantastic. Um, we actually had the good fortune of being able to do some work with his students this year for one of his graduate level classes. So Gabby Brewer, Katie, Price, Anton, Chris, Sean Lee and Justin uh, were all part of that. Connor and Taylor were some uh, students that worked with us last year. Christian did some work with us uh, in the offseason, representing Bucknell University. Connor Kipp, he's doing some work right now, along with Lucas Wabango of Central College uh, in Pella, Iowa. And then Tyler Schanzenbach, who's been my student pretty much since the inception. He is a rising senior. If there are any academic folks in the group that are looking for a fantastic undergraduate to do some work, um, Feel free to reach out to me, feel free to reach out to him on Twitter. Um, I think that he is a student who can certainly bring some great value to your undergraduate. Please. Pretty much represents all of our work. Um, some of the version 2.0 continued work. We're looking at different probability sets to one and two point goals. Uh, we're looking at some plus minus models. We do not have time on field considerations presently in our game sheets on play by play. Uh, we're looking at face off win, overall face off percentages that are overvalued, undervalued. Um, I'm sure some of the people in the room who are doing some of your last work, maybe Kyle and Zach, have some interesting insights on that. Uh, we were looking at some two point heavy shooting strategy, kind of the Golden State Warriors theory uh, for offensive tactics. We did some wonderful work in entry draft considerations doing K-means clustering and machine learning. We were doing some multinomial regression and some, uh, our shiny work with Professor Bosch and his students, um, and even building out some uh, specific predictive models as well. Um, something that I would like to get into, I've had some conversations with some uh, universities, some motion director and computer vision work, uh, health diagnostics, player tracking. Um, we've done some log text with text modeling, highlighting goal tender and primary tender contributions and expected point per shot along with actual point per shot was something that we engaged in and really got, we feel very solid on. Uh, and it was certainly a piece of uh, the puzzle when we went into free agency this year. Uh, Major League Lacrosse introduced the player movement policy similar to uh, professional sports free agency program. So certainly brought in some conversations about who we might potentially uh, try to sign and bring into our organization. At this time, I, I certainly appreciate uh, your time, and I'd be more than happy to engage in questions. So, uh, Jesse, I have the mic on, and I'm looking at the audience. Uh, I think we'll throw it open to any questions that anybody might have. Jesse, it looks like you answered them in advance. Well, that's great to hear. <laughs> We appreciate you taking time. Uh, for... see... Go ahead. I, I do just want to give a, one quick hat tip to my wife. Um, I am on my 10 year anniversary trip in Aruba right now, and she did give me the good fortune of being able to take the time to do this presentation. So I'm about to head out to the beach and meet up with her. But thank you all very, very much for your time. And, and feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or by email, uh, which is up here on, on this slide that you see right now. And uh, I look forward to engaging uh, into the future about some of the great things that we'll All right, Jesse, thank you. Uh, we, you got cut off, but we appreciate your time and go enjoy the beach. Thanks again. Take care. Take care. Thank you.